presented by Brothers Truck Parts. Here's H&M Saw's Project Hudson Hornet. We're going to be tearing into the powertrain of our Hudson Hornet today, and I got two special guests with me. I got Jerry, the original owner of this Hudson, who is Doug's father. And he's going to supervise today because, you know, we may miss a step or something, so he's going to make sure that we're on point. We're going to start with penetrating all the hardware so that the penetrating loop can work while Doug and I start to remove the drive shaft. Then we're going to cut the exhaust out and start tackling that transmission. Let me get that 13 from you. Watch yourself there. Got it. Now, we're going to be changing the U-joints on this drive shaft, but Doug's got a very good tip for you guys who are doing an R&R &R at home, and you don't need to change your U-joints on your drive shaft. There's a step you need to take so that you don't damage your U-joints and have to replace them. There's two things that you always want to be really careful. If you've got a split drive shaft, right, then what you want to be able to do is get yourself a marker and mark the drive shaft itself where they go. Just make sure you have lines so you can always match up those lines. And the reason that's important is if the U-joints are 180 out, they're gonna rotate at different speeds and you can get a high speed wobble and you won't know it. So it's real important. And when they dynamically balance these, you just wanna make sure you have everything in line. And then when you go ahead and you pop your knee joints off, take a piece of tape and run it around. Inside the U joint, the little cups that you have here, you have a set of needle bearings. And if those fall out and you don't have a new U joint to put in, they're just a real son of a gun to try to get back in. So basically, our engine is locked up, and so you can't just unbolt the torque converter because you have to turn the engine to get to all the torque converter bolts. And in our case, this particular torque converter has 100 bolts, <laughs> whereas today's cars have three to six at the most. If you're a Honda, you have eight. Um, so what we're gonna do, Doug and I and Jerry have already penetrated all the hardware as far as the linkage goes for the emergency brakes, and we have penetrated and so far loosened the nuts and bolts that hold our cross member in. That way we can go ahead and remove them. We're gonna take an axle, I mean, uh, an axle strap, yeah. yeah. And because we have to go down with the car, it's a lot of weight being held on by two bolts up front of this engine. So we're gonna use that axle strap to come from here to there, holding the transmission up so we can bring the car down, continue the process of removing the powertrain. The interesting thing on this system is, is it doesn't use a double system. All of the new cars will have a double um, brake cylinder onto it. So if one fails, one controls the front, one controls the back. And the older systems, they only used one, a single piston that went through. So when you lost brakes, you lost all brakes. And so the only possibility you had to stop at that time was an e-brake and the way this is set up you just keep pushing and the e-brake automatically goes on it's a wonderful feature way ahead of its time by the way it still works on this car that's how we move things around yes it does okay let's go ahead and tear everything out so what we're going to do is we have to remove the brake emergency line that's going through the cross member and it's got a threaded end to it and that threaded rod has a lot of debris from 65 years of road grind on it and you want to reuse it, you want to keep your adjustment because everything on this car is nice and tight and still works. So we're going to spray it, loosen the jam nut, keep the jam nut where it is, and then unbolt or unscrew the end off so we can pull the emergency brake through the cross okay, and this is the handbrake part. Mm -hmm. Up on top right here is a foot brake. How can they hook together up in this linkage? That is cool. Yeah. Now it's important there on the tapping is, is if you've got to tap a bolt out, make sure you leave the nut on it with enough threads that you can tap it and you won't damage the threads. I've seen a lot of people, they'll pull them out and then they start to tap and then you've destroyed the threads and you have to chase the threads. What we've done is we've gotten the linkage out of our way that goes across along with our emergency brake cable and we're ready to go ahead and drop our cross member. We've already loosened up all the bolts and the motor mount bolts that go up to the bell housing. We're going to drop the cross member, we're going to take an axle strap across to hold it up. So you just saw Doug and I pull all the hardware off the cross member and we're ready to go ahead and drop the cross member and that's why we go ahead and strap it. Right. Now, why'd you put the double pieces of wood there? The double pieces of wood are to reduce the stresses in the strap because if you hold it perfectly horizontal, there, as, you, as it puts a load on it, the stresses in the strap will go very, very high. If you put them at an angle, 
the stress is the strap reduced. And this is what I get for working with two engineers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to go ahead and get this thing ready to start the procedure to pull out the engine and transmission as a compound. <laughs> 